Hi, I'm Matthew Pavlich, captain of the Fremantle Dockers, and I'm going back to school with Student Edge. We've been synonymous with the Frio Dockers since around the year 2000, but of course you actually grew up in Adelaide. So can you tell us a little bit about what you were like as a student in South Australia? Uh, we're going to have to ask my teachers for the exact answer to that, but I like to think I was um, a relatively model student um, who tried their absolute best in the classroom and, and always had a bigger picture of wanting to go to university and, and study and you know, have that tertiary education, but um, I had to work really hard in the classroom. It probably didn't come overly naturally to, to me. Um, there were some subjects I, I quite enjoyed, English, um, PE, probably not surprisingly. <laughs> um, I enjoyed legal studies and biology, which biology I ended up sort of going on to a university and studying things like that. But as I said, it wasn't my natural bent, so my true expression of myself was probably, you know, on the sword and shield. So it's really interesting that you say your true expression was on the sporting field because PE is just one hour a day. Now, for someone like myself, that was immersive. <laughs> but for someone like you, uh, that could have been limiting. It was never difficult to stay interested because I knew how important school was and the connect to a tertiary education and then to full-time employment. And mum and dad, while I think they saw my full expression out on the sporting field and saw my ability, my talent, that they gave me, that God gave me. Um, I think their bent was to make sure that, yeah, you're gonna have to study, you're gonna have to work hard because this football thing may not last that long. Um, now history shows that it's lasted a little bit longer than probably we all thought, but, <laughs> but um, it was really important for me to, to make sure that um, I tried as hard as I could in the classroom and, and get a really good score, or as best score as I could, um, particularly in year 12, PER and then, yeah, as I said, to gain that entrance into the university because I needed a backup plan. Um, you know, while I was hoping to be drafted towards the end of my schooling years, there was no guarantees and I think we all know that you know, injuries and form and a lot of other things can influence a player's career. So there was always a fallback position and that was my school. You and your parents really valued school and they really instilled that in you. However, there was a chance you weren't going to go into year 12 because of a fluke in when you were born, which meant that you were actually eligible for the AFL draft at the age of 16. I did nominate for the draft at the end of that year um, with a feeling or with the hope of being drafted by one of the two Adelaide clubs. That would be the perfect world scenario where I'd be able to go onto an AFL list, live, the, live out my AFL dream, but finish my schooling at Sacred Heart where I went to a college in Adelaide. And there was a lot of conversations about what that actually meant. If I was taken by an interstate club, there's 14 other clubs at that stage that were domiciled interstate. So what would that actually mean about my year, year 12? And uh, we had some discussions about that and, and realistically, the, it would have been an interesting scenario if it played itself out, but I would have stayed in Adelaide and finished my year 12 year. That was the commitment that, that we made at the time. Um, and that's the, the messaging that we sent out to the, the interstate clubs. Um, one, it was truthful, but two, it was a little bit strategic hoping that um, they, they got off the scent a little bit of, of, of drafting me and, and I'd stay in Adelaide. But as things turned out, that didn't happen. Um, neither Adelaide club decided to pick me up and I went to, to year 12 and you know, played football but finished my schooling years in Adelaide. Excellent. Well, that's good for us because you ended up going to Frio. Uh, and I understand that you've since studied science at UWA. Can you tell us a little bit about why science? Why that field? Well, look, it was, it was more... Um, you know, sports science and sport or psychology, really. So I did a, a, a mixture of things throughout my um, early years at UWA. Like most kids, stay out of, out of school and thinking about university. Um, you sort of dip your toe in the water and not entirely sure how it may play itself out. And I was very much one of those people. So I ended up starting with a, a double degree of commerce and science um, that, because I was doing part-time, was just going to take so long. <laughs> Um, it, that you know, it was ridiculous to even think that was um, achievable, really. So I ended up going down more the, the sports science and psychology slant, given what I was doing on a daily um, basis as a, as a full-time professional athlete. And um, it was always important for me to have a really good balance in my life. I, you know, if I was full-time, one hundred percent focused on football, which is clearly what I've done with my professional life. But 
if I didn't have something else to, to think about or to focus my attention upon and, and release that pressure valve of intense focus of my professional career, um, I, I would have found it really challenging if I didn't have that release. So uni was as much a release from my professional life as it was to you know, further education and making sure I had that, fall, had that fallback plan. Do you feel a need to impart this to the rest of your teammates, especially the younger guys, by telling them, look, I'm studying at the moment and I think it's something you could get a lot out of? Well, I think the first point is that the AFL is just an absolute cross-section of the community. So firstly, what we say is that study isn't for everyone and that um, while it has been my, um, my bent or my, my slant towards my life outside of the game, um, study may not be, uni is not for everyone. So, you know, there's a lot of other courses out there or the guys who sort of um, do an apprenticeships and other bits and pieces which, so that's the first point, find a passion and, and sort of, you know, go towards that. And the second point is that, from my experiences, having a, a meaningful, um, something meaningful outside of the game that you can focus your attention on absolutely helps you play well. And, and it distracts you from some of the noise that can happen in such a highly analytical and, and ruthless industry. So, um, yeah, it's, it's only been a huge benefit for me and that's, try to, it's, that's something that we definitely try to instill in our player group. When you look back on your career so far, are you grateful that you picked Aussie rules over soccer? <laughs> I had no soccer ability. So I, I played as a, um, as a oh, year one and two student because um, there was no Oz kick. That's how old I am. There was no Oz kick back then. And, um, yeah, we couldn't play football until we were in year three. So I played soccer for a little while, but my passion was always football, um, Aussie rules football. Just to wrap up, is there one piece of advice that you want to pass along to students today? Um, don't pigeonhole yourself. Be open to experiences and be ready to take any opportunity that comes your way. Fantastic. Matt, thanks so much for your time. Pleasure. Thanks, Owen. Hey, guys. If you enjoyed that video, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel or find more of our stuff studios.com.au